Hi guys, Miss Sigmund here. You ready for another field trip? Well, let's go visit the land of fire and ice. Hi guys, I really went on an amazing field trip. It was so amazing. It's actually going to be multiple virtual field trips. So we started off here in Albuquerque. We headed west to Grants, right there. We then headed south on 53, and we went through the El Malpai National Monument and actually camped at El Moro. So this is going to be the same map we're gonna be using for at least four of the field trips because what I saw was absolutely incredible. So remember, Miss Sigmund camped at El Moro. So this is the Bandera Lava Flow. The lava field seen here is made up of mostly A lava. A lava is composed of jagged broken lava produced when the surface of the flow cools and hardens while underlying lava is still in motion. This region is called El Malpai, which in Spanish for badlands, Pueblo Indian legend has it that the lava flow was the blood of the Kachina cowbat. This type of lava formation is called a spatter cone Spatter cones are formed when minor vents form in the molten lava. A surge of hot air rushes through the lava, forming surface tubes and minor vents. When the air breaks through the surface, lava will splash out, forming a type of blowhole that you see here. All right, so check out this lava flow. All right, and again, Look at the moss on the lava rocks. What's it, what does it say? What does it mean? It means north. So the circular stack of lava that you see in this area are Anasazi Indian ruins. If you look carefully, you can see stacks of lava rocks forming a wall in front of a small cave. Going around, going around. Here is the small cave. The cave is actually a surface tube. The insulating properties of the lava made for ideal shelter. So this is a lava sinkhole. This is what happens when the lava tubes collapse. If you look off into the distance, you will see a number of other volcanoes that make up the El Malpai region. There are 29 volcanoes in this area. From this point, you should be able to see around 15 of them. So can you spot 15 volcanoes? The trees that grow on the lava face yet another type of problem. This lava flow is rich in iron content. This tends to draw lightning strikes to the trees growing in it. Look at this cool gnarled tree that was struck by lightning. You can tell it just because the top half has come off. So here's another tree that was struck by lightning. If you think about it, I don't know how many of you know that we had a tree in the kindergarten playground struck by lightning and it's still alive. So next time you come to school, look in the kinder playground and you'll see a large tree with white streaks going down its trunk. Ever wonder what the center of a volcano looks like? This is the center of the Balderas volcano, 800 feet deep, 1400 feet wide, this is just a small portion of it. So 
So this volcano erupted 10,000 years ago. So if you can see all the debris down below, the cone is actually slowly but surely filling up. So truly, it may not be 800 feet deep anymore. With all the lava flow, lava rock, and volcanoes in the area, we know why it's called fire. But why is it called ice? We're about to find out. So we did fire, now we're doing ice. The temperature in this cave never gets above 31 degrees. As rainwater and snow melts seep into this cave, the ice floor thickens. The floor of the ice is approximately 20 feet thick. The deepest ice is the oldest and dates back 3,400 years. The green tint is caused by an arctic algae. The back wall was formed in the early days when ancient Indians and early settlers mined the ice. In 1946, ice removal was stopped, at which time the ice wall was nearly 12 feet high. Since then, the ice floor ha has risen relative to the back wall. The rate of ice accumulation varies with annual rainfall. The cause of the original formation of ice 3,400 years ago is not certain. However, perpetration of the ice is due to a combination of existing conditions that make a natural ice box, 20 feet of ice in a wall, insulated cave shaped to trap frigid air. The ice cave was known to the Pueblo Indians as the Winter Lake. The greens and oranges that you see on this lava are lichen and moss. The moss here is an alpine moss and is very rare this far south. So check out these rocks in this cave. Just the different colors, the variety. I think this was around 3,400 years ago. In early days, there was ice present in the bottom of this small cave. The family that owns the land utilized this as their refrigerator before electricity was available here. This is the land of fire and ice. The Bandera volcano rose up in volcanic fury some 10,000 years ago. The crater is approximately 1,400 feet across and 800 feet deep. Bandera is one of the finest examples of an erupted volcano in the country and one of the most accessible. An ancient lava trail leads you to a collapsed lava tube. Inside the ice cave, the temperature never rises above 31 degrees Fahrenheit. Here, the natural layers of perpetual ice glistens blue-green in the reflected rays of sunlight. 